Eims verlieh ihm den Ehrentitel Dr. Ecstasy. Herzlich willkommen, Sascha Schulgin. Well, thank you. It's a great privilege to be here today. I enjoy this most thoroughly. Uh, I learned quite a bit from Ralph's talk just now, and it changes the way I have to present my, my, my talk. I believe the talk was entitled something like The Activity of Psychedelic Drugs in the Future, or something of that type. And Ralph explained that if you knew what the future was, then you don't need to wait for the future because you have the present. And so, if you know what is going to be active in the future, you know it now. So I can't tell you what's going to be active in the future, I, don't, I can't predict. But I can tell you what's active now and what might be looked for in the future. And I think that's probably uh, the better title I should have. Um, the, uh, the materials we have now that we know to be active, some, not, not all are publicly known, not all are, are, have, been, have been published. I gave an example of one a couple of days ago in one of the uh, sessions in the um, Montreal room in which I talked about a compound called 5-methoxy-dult. I, I have a feeling that some of the polysyllabic words I'm going to be using might go slowly into German. I apologize, uh, but I'm going to rattle on. Anyway, 5-methoxy-dialyltryptamine um, is an interesting compound. I first... <laughs> I first synthesized it a while ago. And I, I had a request from a, a person by the name of Merple, who has a website on the East Coast, uh, to ask, he asked me, what are you working on now? And I said, well, I just, just wrote an article for the third, a, a commentary for the, for the third book on 5-methoxy-dalt. So, whoa, what's that? I said, well, that's the dialyltryptamine. Oh, okay. So what I did, I sent him a Xerox copy or a, 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 a copy of the commentary for the new third book that described this compound. It's not known in the literature. It's a new compound. It's active at 10, 12 milligrams, orally active. And uh, he put it on his website, which I didn't know because I don't look at his website. But he wrote me afterwards about a week later saying, I put it on, on, on my website and then I thought that wasn't very cool, so I took it off my website. So this tells a little bit about the, the present and the future kind of coming together. It had been on his website for, for one week, and three weeks after he took it off of his website, the material having been made in China, made it to the United States by way of uh, Holland. Namely, an unknown compound exposed in the, in the, to the public for, for six, seven days, actually served as, the, the, the method synthesis was there, served as a Stimulation to the, uh, I guess, legal in China. I, can't, I don't know what the laws are there. Heaven's sakes, I don't know. Uh, allowed it to be synthesized there and then moved into Europe and then moved to the United States in three weeks. It is still not in the, in the chemical literature. I've never published a paper describing it. It's not in chem abstracts. So you have an interesting case here of a material that is a psychedelic drug and it is available but nothing is known about it because there's nothing been published about it. It's an interesting aspect of the future, the present, that I find to be fascinating. Um, another example is a work that had been talked about some by David Nichols. His, his uh, group in Purdue had developed a, material, a number of materials called flies. Uh, there's the uh, uh, fly is basically two, uh, I, I don't know how you translate hand waving, Two furan, dihydrofuran rings on either side of a, of a ring with, a, with a comp, something down here and a chain up there. And the chain is two carbons. It's a phenethylamine. It's three carbons, amphetamine. I love, I love chemical structures. I call them dirty pictures. Uh, by, with blackboards, but I have to use my hands, and you're going to have to put up with it. Uh, anyway, the um, material was a dihydro, di, dihydrofuran compound with a bromine down in, down in this bottom part of the molecule and a, and a, um, a two-carbon chain up at the top, making the phenethylamine. It was called 2CB uh, two fly. It was published some 
few years ago by uh, Dr. Nichols and his group in, in Purdue. And uh, I've explored it with my wife uh, at levels of 8, 10 milligrams. Extraordinarily short-lived, very, very uh, pleasant, quite erotic, uh, no, no hangover, no after effects. Uh, I, I, it was a very, very satisfactory compound. But is it a compound of the future or of the present? Is, again, the situation is, I don't know how to define the, now the future action of compounds 